In its lowest and least civilized form, cooking is little more than the stoking of the human engine with fuel. But at its best, it's a fine art, one of the marks of a developed civilization. The great chefs have always played upon the human palate as upon a musical instrument, running through all the changes of salt and sour, bitter and sweet, making use of every note of savory and spice to make of cooking a noble art. Our story is about one of the great chefs of all time, a man who was trained by the famous Escoffier by Jean Camus. But his own life was to run through as many flavors as one of his own dinners, and he was to know the salt and sour as well as the savory and the sweet. Much of it happened here in this little restaurant. We call our story, Recipe for Success. But not too many years ago, success seemed far away for the one and only Henri Charpentier. For here he is, a failure at 70, inspecting the only restaurant building in California that his pocket can afford. One thing is sure, I can't sink any lower. Bonjour, madame. If it's for dinner, you have come here a little early. We are not open yet. But wait. Never let it be said that only Charpentier disappointed a lovely lady. a piece of chicken. It either means it would be supreme de volaille, served and cooked as only Henri, Henri Charpentier knows how. It was a far cry from this shabby, run-down wooden house with its rusty cook stove and its peeling walls back to the spick-and-span orderly kitchen of a famous French cafe. Perfect, Marcel, perfect. Who knows, mon cher, you may yet become a great chef. Poulet champo for Madame la Comtesse. Two more minutes and three more bastings. And you, my little one, will be part of a beautiful lady. What a destiny. Madame la Duchesse de Brie and her party. Attention, associate. Quatre filets de sol, vin blanc. Rotiteur. Quatre poussins grillés. Bon. Entremétier. Quatre asperges hollandaises. Entremétier encore. Pommes soufflées qui accompagnent. Bon. Garde à manger. Quatre salades endives, la sauce fine. Bon. Pâtissier, le soufflé chocolat qui suivra. Bon. Ah, lobster Henri, langouste Henri, noisette agneau, suprême de volaille. Club qui va, qu'est-ce que tu as fait ici? Ah, oh. Zut, ma petite mère, mais qu'est-ce que c'est que... Can't you see the little boy's hand is cold? Get me some olive oil, quick. Can't you see his hand is burned? Here. Get me some olive oil, quickly. You're not the first one to have his hand burned by Petite Marmite. I did it too when I was your age. Only it wasn't on the kitchen floor that I spilled that soup. I spilled it all over the dress of a beautiful lady. I then thought the world had come to an end. But she was very kind, and she wrapped her own handkerchief around my burned hand. It was edged with fine lace. I still have it. That great lady was the divine Sarah Bernard. I'll take a lesson from her in kindness and forgive this child for spilling your soup. All right, back to work. My handkerchief is not edged with lace, but you may keep it as a souvenir of Henri Charpentier.
Madame la Duchesse, you make my poor restaurant the royal palace. Madame la Comtesse, when you hear my poor restaurant becomes a royal palace. Monsieur Henry, the Prince of Wales. Here? Yes, he's entering right now. At last. The first gentleman of Europe and his first restaurateur to meet. A historic occasion. Take it. So you are the great Charpentier, whom I've heard so much. And who is greatly honored by your Royal Highness's visit. This way, please. My mother constantly refers to a dish you once prepared for her. Langus, I believe. Langus Victoria. I prepared it especially for the occasion and took the liberty of naming it by her Majesty. This way, please. Sir. Well, then, let us see what you can do for us. What is your pleasure, sir? Oh, no, no. Everyone tells me when you go to Charpentier, leave it to him. Wonderful. My friend, you did not tell us what dessert you suggest. I warn you, it'll have to be something very unusual to keep company with this magnificent food. Yes, sir, I will try it. What will you try? For some time now, sir, I've been experimenting with Crête Française, a so simple little French pancake. With your permission, sir, I will try them. They must be cooked here, before you. Sounds exciting. I've never yet served them to anyone before. Well, well, we're privileged. We're to be present at the making of a bit of culinary history. Let us hope so. Sir. It's in the sauce that the secret lies. The sugar must be flavored with vanilla. There must be orange and lemon skins, not the peels. So only the oils will be used. We need all bubbles. Now, if I'm right. <laughs> oh, this is indeed exciting. What an aroma. Of course, I should have known. There must be the burning. I oh, know, my friend, beauty before everything. Not yet, sir. But since crepe is a feminine noun, I will call it with your Royal Highness's permission, crepe princess. Oh, thank you, my friend. But this dish should be named for something as beautiful as itself. And I give you my word that all princesses are not that, no. Let's see. I have it. It must be named for a beautiful lady. And have we not one here with us? <laughs> so if Papa will permit, it shall be named for her, Susan. <laughs> so, a new dish is born. Crepe Suzette. <laughs> <laughs> La Belle France, the land of exquisite sauces, champagne and civilized diners, had always been home to Henri Charpentier, but he had won all of its medals and its ribbons. New York lured him west. There were new palates to conquer, and new triumphs there, to be won with saucepan and skillet. Madame, you're lucky. You have no memories to haunt you. No mocking ghosts of dead days. Guard you, how they crowd upon me, those ghosts. As if they have waited till now to trap me in this dirty place, Paris. Monte Carlo, Italy, London, 
Berlin, New York, Chicago, Lindbrook on Long Island. Ah, but Lindbrook. That night when she came back. Yes, but this is the night of the week we are closed. Oh, my mistress has come all the way from New York, monsieur, especially to find this place. I'm sorry. She'll be very disappointed. You see, she's old and tired from the trip. Could she perhaps stay here for a while and have maybe just a glass of wine? Well, if she has come all this way... Oh, thank you, sir. Please help me carry her in. Carry her? Yes. She's not able to walk. Who is this mistress of yours? Madame Sarah Bernard. Sarah Bernard? Here? Yes, madame. But they told me it was always full. Usually it is, madame. But this is the night of the week we are closed. Oh, and I'd so hoped for some real French cooking. They told me this was the only place in the country where I could find it. And some real French wine. And so you shall, madame. Henri Charpentier will cook for you himself. Thank you, John. Mommy. Only Catherine, madame. It is my favorite. I know, madame. I served it to you once before. Only then I did not serve it in a dish like this. I fell and spilled it all over your dress. And what? When? Where? At the restaurant Fascati. In Le Havre. Le Havre. I haven't been there for many years. Oh, I remember. A little boy with a scalded hand and tears running down his face. Not because he'd burned his hand, but because he'd spoiled my dress. You are that little boy? Yes, madame. I have something, madame. Do you recognize it? It is one of mine. Yes, madame. It is the handkerchief you wrapped around that little boy's burned hand. And you have had it all these years. How many is it? Twenty-seven, madame. Twenty-seven years. I've had a night carrying my curtain. I did not know it. Yes, madame. But this is charming. Charming. Oh, I insist that you sit down and tell me what happened to that little boy. Thank you, madame. And when those I had met in Europe and in New York, Theodore Roosevelt, J.P. Morgan, Vanderbilt, Velasco, and many others, when they heard I was here, they came here to taste my cooking. And soon others followed. Once it was in 1917, when Marshal Joffre came over on the French warship. He came here. He remembered from Paris my lobster Henri. Trust a Frenchman to find good cooking. <laughs> so you did well. Yes, madame. The years have been very kind to me. When I started, I had two tables and plates and silver for six. Today I have a farm of 22 acres where I breed my own chickens and pigeons and grow my own vegetables so that everything will be the very best for my guests. I also have a cellar with all the great wines of France, like this Montrachat we're sipping. 
just as exquisite. Just what I had hoped for. You know, Maureen, I was thinking today I wanted to get away from people. And I long for real French cooking and wine like this. And I remembered someone had told me that you were here. I ordered the car and well, here it is, everything fulfilled. Is that not wonderful? It's wonderful. It's a miracle. All my life, I've kept the memory of that great and beautiful lady who gave me the handkerchief. And always I have wished that I would have a chance to meet her again. And when I... You are a true Frenchman. A true romantic. Madame, will you please humor me and take your coffee and liqueur in the garden? It is cool there, and there's a full moon. All the, the garden, a full moon. Is my little boy going to make love to me? <laughs> yes, madame. That little boy has found out how to take the moon out of the sky. And for many years, he has wished for a chance to serve it to his lady on a plate. The moon on a plate? I can't wait. You will have to carry me on it. But it won't be difficult. There's so much less of me now. There's so much more of me now. <laughs> First of all, the coffee. And now the brandy. He has waited in his bottle for over a hundred years for this moment. And I have waited a long time for this toast. To the most gracious lady I've ever met. And the greatest artist of all our times. And I, to the most gallant little boy I ever met. But now, where is my moon? Ready for you? For the divine Sarah Bernard. The moon on a plate. My name is John P. Williams. We wondered, could we have a table here for dinner? I'm very sorry. I serve only guests who have reserved tables, and I'm afraid they're all gone for the evening. Come now, surely you can make an exception just as one. I'm very sorry. We're from New York. We, we've heard so much of your wonderful cooking. Thank you. Please. Well, I hate to disappoint lovely ladies, but... Uh... I'm sure you won't regret it. All right, just as one. That's all. The part in number four. I'm sure the ladies will want cocktails, and bring me a wine list, please. One moment, monsieur. Yes, madame. That's right, a party of four. Thursday at seven. Your usual table, yes, madame. What is this? We're revenue agents, Charpentier. There's no need for this. We're not armed. Tell me where you keep your wine and give me the keys. If you don't, we'll ransack the place, break the glasses and everything else in it. When you put away that gun, I'll talk to you, not before. Monsieur, we are honest people here. I cannot do my cooking, nor can I serve my customers with food as it should be served without the aid of wine. Here we have never been in the business of making drunkards. And that, I imagine, was what this law of prohibition was meant to stop. The keys. One more thing, monsieur. 
If by this harmless breaking of a crazy law we are to be criminals, so be it. But I can tell you this, my friend. I would much sooner be such a criminal than I would adopt the contemptible methods you have used tonight. Alphonse has the keys to everything. He will give them to you. Sure. Yes. This is the end of the restaurant Henri. And it's the end of Charpentier. All oh, my fortune was in these cellars. Rockefeller Center. Chez Paris. Failure. Failure. Always failure. Tell me one thing, madame. How many times must a man start all over again? Do you think it's possible? At my age, with no money, nothing but the skill of my hands. After all, what is needed to create a miracle? But a few vegetables, a little heat, and the hands of Henri Charpentier. So we try again, huh? Why not, Mobile? Why not? Well, did he try? After this brief announcement, we'll go to the town of Redondo Beach in California, where a very great chef presides over a tiny restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the great Henri Charpentier. Could you tell us about your restaurant here? My restaurant is very small, monsieur. We serve only one party of 16 people every night. And what is the dinner tonight? Monsieur, we have the longest or lobster, friend Victoria. And we have the soup, cream de France, which I created for the Marechal Joffrey in 1917. Then the canard Belasco. Name to the famous grand gentleman in the theatrical business. That should be a company with nice burgundy. And then we have the salad fleury or chiffonade with the French dressing. And to the finale, the crepe Suzette, which was written for the King Edward VII. And to grand finale, Café Noir de Prince has made a wonderful demitage. Ladies and gentlemen, if your mouths are watering as mine is, and you've decided to come here for dinner, let me tell you, you're going to have to wait until 1961, for every night is booked until then. This surely is success, monsieur. Thank you to you, sir. It is a success. Everybody has his own way of success, and mine is very simple. What is your recipe for success? Take every day as it comes and find a peace of mind. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, before I forget, sir, whatever happened to that first important customer of yours, the cat? Oh, you mean Miss Madame Minette? Here you are on my lap. Well, still with you, how well she looks, and no wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the cat that looked at the king, in this case, the king of chefs, and she lived happily ever afterward. And thank you, sir, for letting us visit you here and for the privilege of telling your interesting story. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us look at our true story for next week. In this world of speed and danger called sports car racing, a man wondered if his skills, his talent, and his courage could conquer the handicap under which he labored. The woman who loved him and the friend who trusted him helped him to face his problem and the checkered flag. And until it's time for that story, ladies and gentlemen, goodbye.
Join us for Telephone Time next week. Until then, we remain sincerely yours, the Bell Telephone System. Thank you.